Good morning. And welcome to St. Olaf for the celebration of the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We also welcome all who are watching this liturgy via the live stream and the television broadcast. Our presider is Father Michael Krenick. Please continue to practice social distancing. Mask wearing is encouraged. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear friends, we come together to celebrate the love that God has for each one of us. But for those times that we have failed to see God's love, for the times that we have sinned, let us now seek God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Thank you. 
Let's pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever. And A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
We are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Recently, I read an article in the Star Tribune about an experiment that began well over a hundred years ago. And the experiment was that the scientists took a bunch of seeds put them into little jars, and put them in a place where no sunlight or any other moisture could get at them. Some were put in jars for 25 years, some for 50, some for 75, and most recently they just opened the ones that were put in there 100 years ago. And they were hoping that, of course, this experiment would continue on. And so, The scientists of today took the seeds and put them in some soil and waited. And it took them a little over two weeks, but they finally saw some growth coming forward. When I think about that reading, or that article, 
I think of today's readings, having trust that when you scattered the seed as the beginning of our gospel talks about, that it will germinate, it will produce the harvest that the man is hoping for in that parable. But if we stop and think about it, isn't that precisely what God wants of each one of us? To allow his word to be planted within our hearts, and then he waits to see what we will produce. Do we produce the works of the Lord, or do we ignore it completely? Because again, those plants would eventually die if we ignore them completely. Having grown up on a farm, I spent many days like the last couple of weeks out in the bean fields and corn fields, hoeing out thistles and other weeds to encourage the plants that we wanted to grow would be successful. And even in those hot, hot days, we always went out as a family. We went out to do this work together. And it is usually there that we learned more about my dad than maybe we even wanted to know sometimes. <laughs> but we learned about his whole growing up, what it was like for him when he was a young boy pulling weeds in his own dad's fields. And it's a reminder to us that only when we share the good news of the gospel or what we've done as we were growing up or what we do even today, that others get to know us better or get to know the word of God even better. For when we share that love that God has for each one of us, it is then that that word germinates within us and starts to produce exactly what it was intended to do, to produce that grain of the word of God and encouraging others. And of course, Jesus had the second parable about the kingdom of God. And he talks about that small mustard seed. Now, the only mustard I ever recognized was a weed that grew up in our farms and we always ended up pulling them out, so I don't know how big our mustard seeds ever would have gotten. But the ones that Jesus was talking about was the smallest of seed, and if it was allowed to grow to full stature, the birds came and produced, or it produced shade for them. And the kingdom of God is that same way. The kingdom of God is each one of us gathered here today. We are already part of that kingdom by the gift of our baptism. But the kingdom of God will only grow if we ourselves continue to nurture that word of God that he has given to us. And it is when we share what faith means to us that we start to have that trust that the word of God inspired by Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and of course gathering here weekly, we recognize that God is inviting us to grow with him. Today, as we gather here, let us ask God for that grace to not only hear his word, but make sure that it lands here within our hearts and that it is nourished each day through our own daily prayer, our acts of kindness, good works towards one another. It is then that we will see the experiment that God has with each one of us, that he wants us to produce the fruit that will be harvested at the end of our lives, and hopefully we are welcomed into that kingdom of God. I think back to that article in the Star Tribune, and really the scientists of 100 years ago had a lot of trust that somebody today would follow through on their works but not only that, but the scientists of today have also taken seeds and they are also trusting that 100 years from now, somebody else will continue this experiment. So today, as we gather here, let us recognize that God is inviting each one of us to take an integral part in his kingdom, to allow it to grow by our faith and allow each one of us to produce the fruit that we are called to do as good followers of Christ. The Christian faith invites us to make changes in our life that need to be changed and to make sure that the word of God spreads up. So of course, we have to pull out those weeds around us, those things that keep us from knowing the fullness of God's love and dwell more on that gift of God's word 
his presence here in the Eucharist, and his presence in one another. It is then that the kingdom of God will produce exactly what God had intended from the beginning, that we might be welcomed into his ultimate kingdom in heaven. Ask God for the grace this day to produce exactly what he has asked of us, that we might be disciples of Christ, spreading his word with our faith, our words, and our actions. Now in faith we pray, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that each of us serves an important role in building up the kingdom of God, let us bring our prayers before our God. For all church leaders, that they may guide the church to increase of love, charity, and faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we may be strengthened by Christ's good news and we may have a more intimate relationship with God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathering together as the church, that what we sow in our day-to-day -day activities may aid others into the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, to work for peace through justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all afflicted with disease and illness, that they may know firsthand the healing power of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially our loved ones, that they will experience the peace of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us gather our prayers into one as we pray the Archdiocesan Synod prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, make our ears to hear, make our eyes to see, make our mouths to speak, make our hearts to seek, make our hands to reach out and touch the world with your love, amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing, renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, to whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Olaf and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share now with one another a sign of Christ's peace. For the distribution of the Eucharist today, there will be a station over here by the organ. We ask the far section to come forward first and return by the side, then the middle section forward and come through the middle. On this side, we begin with the middle section. Have you turned through the middle and the far side and return by the side? And those up in the balcony, there will be a Eucharistic minister coming to you. We ask that you stay in your places. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. We actually have no announcements this weekend, so take some time to, yes, thank God and maybe clap for that too, yes. <laughs> we do wish that you would have a Nice and cool afternoon, even though it's supposed to hit 95 again today, but keep enjoying the good Lord being with you throughout this week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.